My name is James Williams Jr. This is Comfort Happy Number Two. This is my final video of racial identity crises. All right. So I addressed it some stuff that may have offended, and I've said things that damn sure will have offended. And you know, I'm not gonna apologize for the truth. So now I'm going to um get into specifics. All right. So I have one or two friends that are mixed. I have some cousins that have married out of their race and they have mixed children and their children can pass as white kids. All right. So here's the thing on that. You know, I do worry that they may have racial identity crisis and hopefully they'll be able to deal with it. And if not, dear old cousin James or Uncle James, whichever one they want to call me, is there to guide them so that they're, they're going to have it a little bit easier than me because like I said, they actually look like white kids with tans. So... And the same thing with my brother's children. And, you know, only one of my siblings has had, like, darker children. But, you know, here's, here's how I see that. You know, we are a very open family with um, our choices of races in which we date. No. Now, I will say, um, in the other video, I addressed it, how people will come to me and ask me, honestly, uh, what am I? You know? And, and I'll be honest, you know, most of the time I tell them, you know, I'm mixed and then I leave it. But that's like not the right answer. So there's like, no, I mean, what are you mixed with? I can see that you have something else in you besides black. And, you know, I'm not going to be a rude person and I'm going to tell them, yeah, I'm part Cherokee and I'm part white as well as black. They say, so how do you... uh late or identify or what do you do when it comes to jobs I said I just put down black and they're like why and I was like because that's what my birth certificate says he's like but you're clearly not just black I said yeah you know I go through this a lot I'm so used to it that it, it's like so infinitesimal now that it's almost like being on South Park and declaring shenanigans on people who recognize that I am mixed all right you, you deal with things differently than most people when you're mixed because people who aren't mixed have no fucking idea the shit that people come out their mouths with. If you're mulatto, and that means you, you look more white than black, you have no black features whatsoever, like my nephews, you have no black features, you have white hair, and I don't mean white hair, it's straighter than mine. My shit's actually curly. And, um, you know, I mean, you, you have, like, straight white features. White skin, little white nose, no slant to your eyes, no, none of it. You have nothing but white features. You're mulatto. And if you're mulatto, you're passing. My mom could be technically considered mulatto because she looks like she's exceptionally white. Some of my white friends have seen her and said, your mom's whiter than my mom. So, you know, depending on who you bump into that day would affect the questions. And why did I bring up racial identity crisis? I brought it up for Miss Shim and because of all the white privileges things that I've been reading on Top Buzz and all the other things that I've read, you know, these are things that people are afraid to address. You know, when I was going to make my documentary called My America, I still would love to make that movie. But I don't think now is a good time because racial, racial tension, especially in Charlottesville, has been on an all fucking time high, especially before Miss Hayer lost her life for these fucking statues and then after Miss Hare lost her life for these fucking statues, we haven't gotten much better. We haven't gotten to a point. They reclosed the road where she died, and I don't know what they're doing, but, you know, they, they did something. And, you know, the, the whole thing is that it's one race. It's the human race. Now, when you want to go gender, uh, there's so many different classes of gender now, and I'm like, well, damn, I know I'm a man. And most women know they're women, but when the transgender community comes in, you really don't know how to address them. So to everyone who's transgender that I have personally offended, I'm sorry. There's not enough representatives of you in Hollywood, in Charlottesville, anywhere, to explain to us how we address you without offending you. All right? It's the same way where there's not enough uh, movie characters that are mixed, so no one really knows our stories. Which is why I have those Laffy Taffy boxes full of um, movie scripts that I wrote for me. But my character is either black and Native American or black and Chinese or black and Japanese or black and Korean. Because most people don't believe that I have any white in me anyway. So 
this way that everybody gets a better taste of culture. And so the stories would be, I, I have one story about the, the blood oath. I can't remember exactly what it is, and I don't want to give it away in case someone takes my shit and gets famous while I get nothing. But anyway, the blood oath basically has a dude who's mixed, who stumbles into some shit and comes to find out that his father, who was a black man, took an oath to help an Asian man do something. So as time went on, he married an Asian woman, has me, and somehow or another, I bump into that guy's daughter who's going to honor the oath because something happens and we wind up meeting and then there's a big ass kung fu battle and then it's back to save the day, go home. Okay, and that's pretty much all the stories. They all have some mixed guy who goes into action with other people that are of Asian and black and white. My script has everybody. There's no escaping. Whatever ethnicity needs to be in there, they're in there. Some of them are stereotypical. I will not lie. I, I don't have, like, Asians running, like, nail salons and shit. Because when I wrote them, there wasn't that many Asian nail salons. There were no Asian massage parlors in Virginia, anyway. And there were no, um, CLCs. So I went with what Asian stereotypes I knew and hoped that I didn't offend people. And so, so I wrote, like, I have, like, about a thousand strips. And then I wrote other scripts because as a person who's Native American, I know that certain things that you guys don't know are actually Native American tribal guardians. So, like, Bigfoot, Thunderbird, Coyote. I wrote about Bigfoot the most because he seems to be more of universal guardian toward tribes, and he seems to be the only one I know really well. And then I wrote about the Thunderbird, and then I wrote about Gargoyles. Now, that was a three-section series, and in that, I don't get to be into the movie until, like, the very last one. So if anybody wants to make movies, and we have revenue, and we have actors, I'm ready to go. And that's the whole thing. I've been ready since 2000. And I've been at this since 2000. And the only thing I've gotten from everybody is the finger. So, and it wasn't a pretty finger. It was probably, like, the thickest finger. Maybe two fingers right up the ass hat. But anyway, so, I wrote these things. To, to, to clear up things because a lot of people do have racial identity crises. And now I'm going to move into some shit that I found funny. And it still has to do with the same topic of racial identity crisis. I don't know the name of the show. And I'm pretty sure I've seen one of these things on YouTube as well. So this is a black dude <laughs> who's not mixed at all. I don't know who you are, but thank you for making that movie. Um... He decided that he wanted to give up being black and became white. But he didn't change his skin. He just put on a fucking, like, a Poindexter-type wig. Don't ask. I call him a Poindexter-type wig. So he put on a Poindexter wig, and instead of talking like I'm talking, he decided to talk exceptionally white. Now, I don't know how you talk exceptionally white, but Eddie Murphy started to stereotype about white people and how they talk. So, if you're going to talk like this, if you're going to talk the part of being white, you have to be extremely polite. And you have to talk white. And so he was white. So <laughs> then he, he 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 did it was like documentary style. So he, he, he did his black part first. And he had like plaits or dreads or whatever. And then he had his white porn dexter wig on and he was white and he decided he wanted to be white, so he had the little BCGs on and stuff and it was just all kinds of crazy, but it was a good video. Yeah. And it exploits racial identity. It actually makes a fucking point about racial identity crises. Because there are some people who strongly believe that they were born into the wrong family. And I have met people who are um, Twinkies and people who are saltines. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm so pissing off people with that. Okay, so let me break it down for you. If you've seen Harold and Kumar go to White Castle, then you know what a Twinkie is. A Twinkie is a person who is Asian on the outside but a white person on the inside. Okay, that's a Twinkie. A saltine is a black person by no means necessary, has one drop of white blood in them, but act completely and totally white. Now, you have levels of bread. You have white bread, you have wheat bread, and you have toast. Alright, so if you know a white person who's blacker than you are, they're wheat bread. Or they're toast. Because those guys are just fucking lively like that, you know? And they're more blacker than black people. And I'm like, well, what the fuck? You know, and I've met 
fucking toast. You know, I've met white guys who were blacker than me and just like badass black, but they're not black on the outside. They're black on the inside. And they have literally said, nah, motherfucker, you looking at a black man trapped in a white man's body. And I'm thinking to myself, well, damn, why don't you just give me a fucking job? Because I'm a Native American trapped in a black man's body. So, you know, I, I do have fun with those things. And, you know, if I'm offending you, I'm sorry. I changed the video. But, like I said, you know, I've, I've met Twinkies. I've met overly polite Asian people who act more white than Asian. Or Asian people who just literally don't know they're Asian. And, like, okay, and they, they there's no excuse. They just assume that they're supposed to act that way. And it's probably a genetic flaw, and I'm not judging them. That shit happens. You know, and the same thing with, with black people who act exceptionally white. You can't help who you are. You can only improve yourself or destroy yourself. All right? So in picking whichever one you're going to be, be proud of who you choose to be. I choose to be mixed because I am mixed. I do not deny my black heritage. I embrace it. Right up until somebody goes to China and decide they want to steal some motherfucking Louis Vuittons. And with my face, I can switch off. And they were like, well, what do you mean? I'm Cherokee, motherfucker. Now, unless somebody Cherokee goes around and starts blowing shit up and claiming to be Coyote the Trickster, you know, until then, I'm Cherokee. Then that happens, you know. Quick change. They go around doing some shit. I'm black, motherfucker. No. Now, again, this is all in fun, so if it's offending you, I'm sorry, but that, that's the advantage of being mixed. You know, you can um, <laughs> check your race at the door. You know, you're like, yeah, I want to be black today, so I'm going to wake up and I'm going to just black. But you don't understand it. Honestly, there's no true way to dress like any ethnicity other than in traditional gear. So if I want to wear the Native American pants and shirt, you know, in the moccasins, because it's the only thing I actually can remember what they're called, you know, I can do that. If I want to wear the Chinese gown and stuff, I can do that. Or the gi for the karate and kung fu, um, I can do that. Uh, people aren't really going to question it, because my face has my eyes slant when I smile. So if I stay like this, you know, people are going to think that I'm a full-born Hawaiian or something. Then I can go wear the Samoan wrap and the other stuff. And if I want to wear the daishiki, I don't know what country that comes from, but if I can wear that, I probably can blend right in. Now, the only thing that I cannot do, I can put on a suit and tie and dye my hair black, blonde, blue, put in blue contacts, but the one thing I can't do without the help of makeup and prosthetics is blend in with white people. All right? Now, if that was offensive to you white people, I apologize, but I'm telling the truth, there's not enough makeup in the world that can make me white. And I'm not down with skin bleaching. I like my skin color just the fucking way it is. I actually wish that it was still up here, but that's what happens when you don't wear long sleeve shirts. Now, and especially in the summertime. Now, these are this is permanent, you know, <laughs> that's just not going anywhere. But, you know, for, for, for me to be full on black, you know, I just put on a do rag, like crunch my hair in the back, and no one's ever gonna fucking know. For me to be Native American, slap on some war paint, tie my hair in a ponytail, or let that shit hang like this, and just, like, don't wash it for a couple of days, you know, I'm good to go. But the thing is, you can dress culturally, but you can't change your ethnicity literally, you know. I mean, nowadays you probably can if you want to change the birth certificate. I'm pretty sure that there's some legal ramifications that you have to go through, but who the fuck has time for that shit? Now, before I go, when I started digging into acting, um, because I didn't know that this actress was still alive, my alias name was Brandon Kramer. So don't look for that because it, it doesn't exist. I'd never made a film under the alias of Brandon Kramer, but it was to honor Brandon Lee and Stephanie Kramer from Hunter because Hunter was my favorite show. Now, I decided that it's best just to use my own fucking name so that my paycheck comes to my house. So if anybody wants to make me a star, James Williams Jr. is the name I'm using. Now, if I have to use a different name, it will only be a Native American name. It won't be anything else but a Native American name. So, if I need to change my name, the last name will be Grey Wolf. Alright, because wolves are one of my favorite animals. And the, the, the Grey Wolf in the Great Wolf. Great Wolf is a tribal leader from down in Florida. I forgot what tribe. Thank you, Mr. Webster. Or Jamie Webster. And, um... 
gray is one of my favorite colors. So it would be Gray Wolf. Now, my first name, I would have to figure that shit out. You know, but outside of that, I'm James Williamson. This is Come For Havoc number two. This has been 15 minutes of a racial identity crisis that you have endured four videos that you can't get back of your life. I apologize if I have offended anybody, but, you know, I thought it would be a great topic to talk about racial identity crises. Now, I could make another video. In fact, I will do that, but not at this time because I am tired as hell and I am going to bed. Yeah, on second thought, maybe I better make another video because I don't want to have anybody like saying, you know, you left us hanging and stuff like that.